feel that it's a close economy with government. Okay. Or with no government. And you know, if we don't have any government, okay. hey, man. okay. So if there is a government, you know how we calculate the consumption. Yes. And if there is no government, you also know how we calculate the consumption. Yes. So when we see close economy, basically what we do is there is no net export. We don't import, we don't export. Sure. Okay. But so what I remember, I remember you said that um, if there is no net export, then we assume it, um, there is no government. I don't wow. remember saying that. Hey. Okay, so that means when they, they close, close the economy, you have to bring the government. No, you know, that is all you are guessing is all wrong. Okay, it depends on the question. The question will tell you either with no government or with government. You have to the question attention. actually stated with the presence of a government. Good. So if the question said that it can still be a closed economy with government, okay you know other ideal cases we can't have a close economy with government uh, without like being important so it's like a restriction we are placing on that particular economy that there would be a presence of a government but we can't export we can't import okay and you know an economy with government we especially ghana do we even have an, an economy without a government? No. So it's like a restriction we are trying to place on that particular economy, that it's an economy without government, okay? Or an economy with government, but it's a closed economy. Okay, so yes, and just take it from this point. If it's a closed economy, the whole idea is there is no net export. But the examiner could go further to tell you that it's a close economy with government or it's a close economy with our government. We get it. Yes. So, so there will be a where there will be net ex like with the presence of government. Would that be a question of the question? Yes. Would that be a case where there is net export without government? No, with government. With government, then yes. it's, it's an open economy. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, I don't know whether you get it. It's an open economy. Okay. So please, I think you have to start paying attention. Yes. I pay attention. Any other question? Johnson. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, please, in reality, do you have a close economy? Come again. In reality, uh, do you have a closed economy? See, that is basically what I was saying. Ah, uh, it, it, it's not really uh the case we don't really really have a close economy definitely you transact with one or more foreign country where you would be importing or exporting good to that particular country so we don't really really have a closed economy oh okay, okay. okay. Good, morning, good morning sir good morning in the when we're doing the train deficit i'm sorry for going back a bit okay you asked whether you, you you were like y minus c minus t is as private and you asked whether we've seen it and then i thought i'll see it so i didn't bother but when i went back i didn't see it i don't understand why it's as private so you said y minus what c minus t good and i asked you if you've seen it yeah so now let's try and do something quantitatively here. All right. So, so 
So Johnson. Yes, sir. This was the equation, right? Why am I close to what? Um man, y minus c minus t minus i. And the y minus c minus t you said was s private. So it became s private minus i. No, I'm talking about the right side. Oh, okay. So it was the whole thing was y minus c minus t minus i is equal to g plus c a minus t. So we subtract the taxes from both sides. Okay, so this side, G plus C A minus T, right? Minus T, yeah. Good. And I asked you that, can you see this side? This side, right? Yeah. Which looks yeah, like... Yeah, I followed the crowd. Let's five it, right? Yeah. Good. So what did we say disposable income is? Johnson. Okay. Disposable. Hey. I I thought it was Nyantichi. Sorry. Johnson. Yeah, is that Johnson? Yes. 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 Disposable income was Y my Y plus NF plus no, I CR plus. Now, teacher, I want the definition. The definition. Yes, please. It's um, the income available after we spend or save or something, yeah. if I'm All right. right. Um, now, Johnson, let's take it from here. So, you know, we said that let's assume <clears throat> this is your income, okay? This is your income. Oh. And you take out of your income, take your consumption from the income. Okay. You come okay. back consumption, you'll be, you'll be expending, right? You'll be spending on out yeah. of your income. Okay. So you take your consumption yeah. from it. And let's say you are a, a good patriot or patriotic citizen. Okay. And you decide to. Yeah. So, after your consumption, after you paid your tax, yeah. what is left is what we are assuming you are going to save. All right. So I see my yeah. I see where I was getting everything twisted. I thought the initially the why was GDP? How did it become income? Like when we're starting, the why was GDP? That's great. It's a great question, Nantichi. I think your friends would want to help. Please, can anyone help Johnson why the why now became our income? Did you have a kid brother called Johnson or something? No, it's like Johnson usually. All right. That's cool. Yeah. Please, can anyone? Yasin, your hand is up. I think you want to help. Jim, in okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember you said we should take Y as GNP. Good. So, are you getting it now? So how is GMP income and how is it relating to the private sector? Good. Now, what did we say the component of GDP is? Okay, we said that GDP is equal to C plus I, right? Yeah. Plus yeah. G, sorry. Yeah. G, oh dear. What is this? Plus J, right? Yeah, plus NX. Yeah. Plus NX. Is consumption part of the GDP? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, it is. And now remember, with consumption, we are not assuming government consuming. We are also not assuming um, businesses consuming. 
but rather which people are we assuming the individual households right household yeah yeah you get it yeah good now what did we say gmp let's fuck up from abroad right good and what did we say for gmp we said that yeah and I remember you represented this with Y, right? Y, yeah. 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 Good. And if you remember, I told you that there are more economic intuition behind this formula generation. Okay. So we are yeah. basically trying to manipulate this side to look like a private man doing something. And manipulate this side yeah. to look like government also doing something. If you could remember. Yeah. yeah, you said that. Good. So, because consumption is usually done by the private sector, yeah. we are assuming that if you take this consumption from this Y and you take the taxes yeah. from this Y, okay, yeah. then this side is going to. Be, oh, sorry. This side is going to be like a private man trying to save. Yes, no. You get it. Yeah. Good. Okay, then thank you. But I have I You're get welcome. it now. Sure. Yeah. I was trying to explain to someone and I got stuck. I thought I had the concept. Oh, okay. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I think we can start or oh. You know, the problem is the link always keep on changing. Okay, this morning like this, I had to ask for another link. So if maybe your friends are not really joining, it maybe they're also not getting the link. Okay, and Yantichi, you asked if I had a kid brother called Johnson. Okay, this morning I called, I WhatsApp him and I told him I need the link. Okay, because our president was not online and he sent it okay that's cool. usually we get like one or one way or the other okay so please i think you can also equally share it in your various pages uh for your friends to also ask, have access to it if you've not done it okay or call your favorite people you know those you live city all right, so I think we can start. So today is going to be a uh, pretty set of what we did last week. Okay, there's just uh, uh, another part of the whole story. Okay, so today should be a warm kind of, you know, you shouldn't struggle in today's lecture. If you understood what we did last week, I don't think we should struggle here. Okay, so today we are going to talk about fiscal policy. You know, I know you know something about fiscal policy. Maybe you don't know that is what we call fiscal policy. Okay. So today you will get to understand the meaning of fiscal policy. Okay. And what fiscal policy has to do with government budgets. Okay. That is basically when we say government budgets, that's basically government uh, spending and receiving some form of revenue. Okay. So that's basically what we are going to understand today. So by the end of this section, we are going to try and understand some basic concepts. Last week, we spoke of autonomous spending multiplier. Today, we are going to add another concept called tax multiplier. Okay, autonomous tax multiplier, fiscal policy, and how can 
someone has sent a message that I'm trying to read. All right. Okay, so I think we can now move. So I've given you this preamble already. Okay. So we will talk about fiscal policy, what it has to do with government budgets. I've said this already. And this is our tax for today. Okay. So we are going yes, to define any question. Hello, sir. Yes. No, um, and just concerning last week, you were like, you wanted us to solve some questions before that. Just reminding me. Before the class ended last week. Yeah. And I think, yes. So last week, I think we solved one question, right? We solved one full question. So today, no, I think no. we are supposed to finish our. I hope no, we are on the same page. So, Bernice. Last week, we didn't solve any question. Oh, really? You just helped us survive the formless. Oh, dear God. I thought we did. All right. So today, then I have to speed up a bit. We have just into it slice. I think I can take it. Nancy, thank you. All right, so um, Benis, we will solve a question today, okay? I really believe in question solving because I believe that is where the understanding comes from. Okay, so let's start. So these are our objectives for today. Now, so remember, this is the textbook for the course, Mankyu and Taylor. We have uh, another nice one you could use. If you need these books, I can just forward them to you if you need them. It's good to learn um, the textbooks. These slides are very scanty. If you really want to appreciate some stuff, okay. Now, this is the level of economic access, okay. So if government um, sees that the economy is not really, really boost or boosting or moving up, governments would want to increase spending, okay? So that all of us could have money in our pockets and do one or two things on our own, okay? And whilst government is doing that, it would improve on the economy's growth. Okay, and if government also notices that there are too many in the system, okay, that um, inflation is going up, things are now becoming hard, okay, that is the main idea if we are not getting money and people are talking, um, sometimes you will just sit back and just think twice and be like, oh, is that they don't know what they are doing or they are saying, okay, because when you have money and I have money, it increases the price of goods and services. And I remember our first lecture, I told you this, nothing comes down in Ghana. Okay, so when you have money and I have money, inflation is going up, prices are going up, things are now becoming harder. Okay, so sometimes it's better for government to regulate the economy in order to reduce the money in the system. Okay, and government can do that by introducing more taxes, okay, or increasing taxes, okay. So if government is really doing that, then we say that if government is spending or trying to tax or reduce or in increase tax, then he's dealing with fiscal policy, okay. And I remember not long ago, 
think last Wednesday, last week Wednesday, I guess. Um, they read the budget to us. They told us what the government is going to do and what government wants to do. Okay, all these things are fiscal issues that goes on in the country. We have basically two main types of fiscal policy. We have one that is called expansionary fiscal policy, which um, in other news you would hear people saying fiscal loosening, okay? And we have the second one that is also called contractionary fiscal policy, which is also basically the same as fiscal tightening, okay? So if government sees that things are not moving well in the economy, life is hard, okay? And people are not really seeing life top, then government would want to increase its spending and reduce taxes. And anytime government does that, we are seeing that he's practicing expansionary fiscal policy or fiscal loosening. Okay, so it's the increase in government spending or reduction in taxes. So if that happens, then we have an expansionary fiscal policy. Okay, and on the other hand, we say that contractionary fiscal policy refers to increase in government taxes and reduction in government spending. And I remember I told you that if government noticed that um, there is too much money in the system and he wants to reduce what is in the system so that inflation won't rise, then government would want to increase taxes. So if you are paying more taxes, it means government is taking more money from you. Hence, he's taking more money from the system, okay? Or government can decide to introduce more taxes in the economy, okay? So not long ago, we had um, luxury tax, okay? We also had um, when you buy one bottle of Coke, you see some sticker on the head, okay? So the goods we were consuming, government began to tax almost all the bottled um, productions, okay? So that is one way of gov government trying to increase or reduce the economy uh, money in the system, okay? Benes? Yeah, so um, eventually when there is an increase in taxes, like it's good for the country at the end of the day. Yes, you know, Some he tries to increase the government debt revenue for both of us is through tax. The reason for government trying to either introduce new taxes or increase the old ones. Okay, if government is that there is too much money in the system, he increases taxes. So we would try and introduce some other factors that he can use to reduce money in the system, of which we will learn in monetary policy, I think, after this lecture. Okay, so basically that is the whole idea. So it's in one way or the other, the best, it's, it's in our best interest, but you know, it makes life also hard for some other people. Let's say you take 3,000 and already you are paying 1,000 Ghana cities as your tax. You can imagine the stress you will go through. Okay. So uh, at the end of the day, it's for our own benefit. So for objective sake, or for let's say confusion sake, anytime you also see fiscal austerity, it's the same as fiscal tightening or contractionary fiscal policy. Okay. So sometimes the examiner would want to check if you really, really understand the cause. So he won't ask you what is fiscal um, contractionary fiscal policy. Okay, so that you would try and maneuver with your English and say, oh, when we say something is contracting, it's like this, okay? Or when we say we are tightening something, then you will just leave this English there, fiscal austerity, what is it? Okay, Johnson, I saw your hand up. Yes, sir. Please. Um, I don't get a point where you said ten thousand rupees is for our own good. Okay, so 
I said that it's for our own good in relation to trying to reduce money in the system. Okay, and I remember I stated that if there is too much money in the system, it causes inflation. Okay, and if inflation goes up, it actually increases the price of goods and services, and you know that already. Okay, so if prices are increased, it makes the economy hotter. Okay, so if government wants to reduce the money in the system so that it will keep the issue of inflation, he tries to increase taxes. He can also try and do something we call the open market operation. There is something we call reserve requirement ratio or discount rate. He tried to increase this stuff. Okay, but because we are not really doing monetary policy, which we'll do next after this lecture, I don't really want to go through that. But the whole idea is I said it's for our own benefit because it will reduce inflation. Oh, okay, sir. so uh, please, inflation, uh, uh, it, it is caused by too much money in the system, which uh, yes. you actually... Johnson? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Okay, it's you actually, learn. Yeah, it's as a result of, uh, I mean, the forces of uh, demand and supply, right? Like, Thank you. Um, Yes. So if, if the supply of money in the system is high and then uh, that causes demand for goods and services to be high, it, it pushes the prices up. Right. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, That's uh -huh. so sir, in, in a situation where, uh, uh, I mean, income of, uh, of individuals is, is stagnant and, and then uh, taxes are increased, and I think it is rather... Uh, and not better. The, the, the you know, yes, so yes, we take this. We we'll take this in another lecture. Okay. Yes. Then you would understand the whole. Okay. So mm -hmm. that would be against us if we don't. We are our income is not increasing, but we are charging a small tax. Okay. Yes. And you would understand from there. Okay. Oh, okay. Sir. okay thank you very much. Sir. Yes. So, Yes. So as Johnson was saying, guys, you can you can testify this. You know, there are some locations when you are there, things are very the prices of stuff there are very high. Okay. And you can you can testify. I don't know if you ever bought anything around atomic. Okay. I don't know. And Medina. You will notice that prices at atomic area is very high, okay, and to that of um, the ones in Madina is relatively lower. The reason is that, or let's say if you try to buy something from East Legon, okay, and let's say not Legon, you will notice that prices of goods and services at its East Legon is very high. For one reason, it's a rich man. Of course, we have people living in East Legon. If you really know the place very well. Okay. Okay. So it's for 20 cities. So if you go there and they tell you the price, you, you, you stay calm and you pay. Okay. And that is the reason of what too much money in the system. Okay, they are in big, big way. So when they are paying something like 200 cities for a lunch, they don't really bother. Okay, So that is the whole idea why governments would want to reduce the money in the system. Okay. So we can just proceed. Now, under the current IMF program, in a number of Tightening measure. Okay, so cleaning up the payroll, reduce government expenditure, introduction of new taxes, and reduction of taxes. So basically, I've said all these things. Okay, if government is reducing its um, spending, you should know that he's tightening the economy. And if it's reviewing and um, increasing or introducing new taxes, it's also another form of government trying towards tightening the system. Now, we did this last week, trying to understand the patient system, 
Okay. And today, remember, we did aggregate demand under the Cation system. And today, we are going to do fiscal policy and the Cation system. You know, you've seen this formula before. Okay. You've seen this formula before. And I remember I told you that if we have something like YD here, what does it signify? This D here signifies what? Government is involved. Good. So it means this is what? A closed economy with what? Government. Yes. Okay, so we yeah. can also have a closed economy without government. And don't take closed economy from the perspective because we said closed, there's no government. Okay, when we say closed economy, it means there is government, but we don't export, we don't import. Okay, so you should put that in mind. And we've, we've dealt with this formula already, but we, were, we are going to also try and do something about this formula, okay, and get the equilibrium income, the equilibrium condition for fiscal policy and education system. Okay, so they said we should take this economy. So, so far as we have governments here, it means it's a closed economy with what? Government. And last week, if you could remember, we did this um, manually. We solved this manually. So I remember I told you that with this, we could have, um, so we have the consumption function to be equal to someone will say A plus B, but this A here, it's a Greek called alpha and the beta, B is the beta. They said we should hold I exogenously fixed and G not exogenously fixed and T not or T also exogenously hot fixed. Now, with the equilibrium condition, we said that what our aggregate demand will be equal to what? Y. Right? And you know this Y here, I guess. Okay, so now we, we are trying to make life simple here. So we are going to say that. Okay. And we are going to say that we have, we are going to expand with something like A plus I not plus G not. Guys, we so want to understand. Everyone. That person. Oh. Right. Yeah. All right. So they said I should mute all. I think of hey, madam, me mute you and be a for CPO. Oh, I was on mute all of us. Okay, so what we, we are here, right? Yes, now, we have this, and I told you that if there is y d is the same as y equals to the a plus b. Now we won't say y d, but this time we are going to say what y, y minus, minus what? C. C. Okay, good. Plus what? I not plus do not. Now, you know. Remember, we can't just board mass. We can't just skip this man. So we have to take this again. Y is equals to a, a plus b y. Okay, minus b. C not. Any question? Okay, so now we want to make Y the subject. So we have Y here, we have Y here. Why don't we bring that this Y this this to this side? So we are going to have Y minus B Y 
equals to a minus b t naught plus i naught plus g naught. I know someone would ask why all of a sudden adding not to this t. Remember, and I didn't want to see. Not not to that then not okay. So if I have something like this, I can make or bring y out and see y minus b equals to a minus b t naught plus i naught plus g naught. We want to make y the subject, so we can divide through by one minus b. The whole of this also by one minus b. So this will just take care of this. Okay, so someone can put this in bracket. Now, our y equilibrium is equals to one over one minus b times a plus b t naught. Hey, sorry, it's not plus, it's minus. Minus. Yeah. All right. A minus b t naught. Okay, plus autonomous and the multiply. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And this side is what we call what? Components, components of the autonomous. Thank you very much. Infinity. And thank you. So you wouldn't want to forget this, guys. You wouldn't want to forget this. Okay, so basically, this is the same thing we've done here. Okay, this is the same thing we've done here. Okay, so I just tried simplifying what is here. So that's basically what we have here. Okay, so this is what we call the autonomous spending multiplier. Okay. And what did we say autonomous spending multiplier is? Okay, we said that it is the it is the multiple by which a change in any component of the autonomous spending multiplier increases equilibrium output. Okay, so the whole idea very soon we'll use mathematical notations to really understand what we meant by what she just said. Okay. So you would understand it properly when we get there. Now, remember I told you today we are going to introduce some small concepts called autonomous tax multiplier. Okay, so we said that, uh, can I delete this, but I will, I will need this. Okay. So when I get there, just remind me, I need the final answer. Okay. So today we will yep. do some small difference. It's not difficult. All right. So we said that we are going to take um, fiscal policy in the simplification system. And we said the fiscal policy is when what government try to make changes to the spending and taxes in order to influence economic activities, okay? So what we just did was the spending as of it, okay? So in this the fiscal policy, okay, is when what? Government spending and taxes, level of taxes change, okay? So we've already dealt with this equilibrium income and all that. Now we are going to what? Deal with the other aspect, which is autonomous tax multiplier. Already you guys know autonomous spending multiplier. So what we are going to do is to solve the autonomous tax multiplier. And you remember we said that the one over one minus B is what we call the autonomous tax uh, spending multiplier. You know, spending is the same as expenditure. So as one of us, carefully explained. He, she said it is a multiple by which a change in any component of the autonomous spending increases equilibrium output. Okay, so 
the autonomous, the components are the alpha, the I naught, and what? The G naught. Okay. Now we are going to take care of our other side. So I told you I Sir. will need the key. Yes. Sir. Yes, please. Well, please, with the components, with the component just listed ab above, why is that a B? Why is that the BT is not included? Thank you. The so BT that's, not. That's basically what I was coming to do here. Okay, thank you. All right. You're so, welcome. Now, when you look at this side, this is what I basically told you I'm going to do. Okay, so it's even here already for us. All right. So let me annotate. All right. So looking at this. We said y e. Sorry, I don't like the e to look like this. Okay, so y e is equals to one over one minus b times a minus b t naught plus i o plus what g naught. Now. We didn't include the T for a reason. And this is what we are coming to do. Those who are familiar with um, calculus, basic calculus, you will notice that if we should differentiate the equilibrium output with respect to B, T naught. So we are differentiating the whole of this with respect to what dt naught. This is what we are going to get. Remember this one, this one is multiplying all the components here. Okay, so we are going to get a over one minus b. We are going to get negative bt naught over one minus b. We are going to get one that is basically i naught over one minus b, we are going to get g naught over one minus b. I don't really want to do this, but you let me do it, okay? So if I multiply what is here with what is here, we are going to get something like a over one minus b minus negative bt naught over one minus b plus i naught over one minus b plus g naught over one minus B. And you know, this is basic math. That's why I didn't want to do it, which is equals to what? Y E. And now if we are differentiating with respect to what? T naught. Remember, this looks like a constant. It has no T naught inside. So this will be zero. But this has T naught inside. So you let's keep this. This one has no T naught. It will be zero. And this one will also be what? Zero, right? And you remember now, if that is the case, then now we have something like this, one over one minus B times negative B T naught. Okay, so what we are trying to say is, if I'm differentiating D E Y, D Y E, okay, with respect to D T naught, I'm going to get something like what? Negative B, right? So if I multiply this negative B, B by this, I'm going to get negative B over one minus B. Okay, and that is basically what is here. Okay, basically what is here. This is negative B, okay? Negative B. We need this for something and you will get to understand this very soon. Please do we get it? Yeah, please no. Yeah, please, um, can you go by me? Especially the part where you were saying that because it's a, there's no not it becomes oh, okay. A... So I think you guys did business. Uh, you finished that business math, right? Okay. Have you done business math? No, next no. semester. We are doing it. But you are doing it as uh, in the form of classes, and you guys have done differentiation yes. integration already, right? Yeah. You've done differentiation. And what you are doing is differentiation. All right, so don't worry. Let's take this. 
um, let's say I have y is equals to 2x squared. How do I differentiate this? If I want to differentiate this, what do I do? I say the y over what? The, the x. x, right? Yes. Good. What was the rule? The rule says that if I have two x squared, okay, what do I do? I bring this to apply it with this, and I take minus one from this. Right? So I'm getting yeah. two point two, and we is lost. You guys did not long ago, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So I'm going to get something like. 4x. Four four. Are we cool? Yes. Sir. Yes. Okay. So that is the rule of differentiation. Now, let's say the same question, but this time I add something like a plus c. Oh, no. I want to use a plus c. Sorry. Why is this thing giving me trouble? This way? All right, so let's say if I add something like plus three, remember, or let's say three X plus two. Let me make it something like this, a quadratic equation. Now, this is X, this is not 32, okay, X. Now, I want to differentiate this. Who can help me differentiate? The Y over the X is equals to? Four X plus two plus three. What Four happened? X. Zero plus why, three. Why is it zero? Because, it's a zero. because it has no x attached to it, right? Yes. yes. Because if we had x attached to this, we would have had two, right? Like what we yes. had. Yes. Yes. The idea is what we are saying here. All right. Similar idea is what we are saying here. Can you see my case? Uh, Can you see my Kaiser here? Yes, sir. yes. Good. Similar idea is what we are saying here. Remember, we are differentiating with respect to what? Tax. This one, does it have T in it? No. It means we can't differentiate this, right? Mm -hmm. So we assume this to be like something like a constant. Are we on the same platform? Yes. yes. Does this have T in it? Yes. 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 So we can differentiate this, right? Yeah. Does this have T in it? No. no. So we can differentiate this. Yeah. Does this have T in it? No. 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 We can differentiate this. So for you not to even get confused, you let me clear this thing. You know, this is just for you to understand why. We are just having that one minus um, T. All right, so now let's take this. I don't know whether I, the one who asked the question now gets it. Okay, so remember this is multiplying everything here. So if I'm differentiating the Y, the Y E over the T naught, this is the only part that we have T naught. So this is multiplying. So I'll just keep this just as it is one minus B. Then when I come here, times, this has no T. So this becomes something like a constant. I can't differentiate it. So this becomes zero. Yeah. Because this has a T to it, it's like you having three X. Okay. So now this becomes what? Minus B. Are you on the mm -hmm. same platform? Yes. Sir. Plus yes. This has to zero. This has also no T plus zero. So if I want to do addition for this, I get Y, E, Okay, equals to what? One over one minus B, sorry, sorry. Huh. One minus B times what? Negative B, because negative. you know, minus B plus, zero plus, you get the negative B. And at the end of the day, this is what we will get. And this is what we call autonomous tax multiplier autonomous tax multiplier so 
you can be asked to derive this in exams. Okay, so if I if we ask you autonomous tax multiplier ATM, you can if they don't ask you, don't go and prove this. Okay. If they don't ask you to prove the formula, just write negative B over one minus B. That's all. That's how sweet macro concepts. If we ask you what is the autonomous spending multiplier, okay, just straightforward autonomous spending multiplier, one over one minus B. Yeah. Okay. And we will give you an equation. So we'll solve some very soon. You will see an equation where you would have to just input the figures there. It's not really difficult. This is just to tell you how we had it. Are we on the same platform? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So please just put this in your um, just put this in mind. Okay. All right. So we are proceeding. So that's what we have here. Remember, I can see, I don't know. I think it's a typo. The negative ne never came, but it will come somewhere. Beneath it, don't worry. I don't want to believe this is the negative, but let's let proceed. You will understand. I don't want to believe this is the negative, but the negative never appeared here. Okay, so let's go down. So, what is an autonomous tax spending multiplier? A tax multiplier is just you know, this multiplier multiplier, they have the same definition. Okay. Multiply, multiply, they have this same definition. So as someone said, is the multiple by which it okay, increases equilibrium output by the same amount. Okay, so then a uh, good. I wanted to ask this question. Shit. Why do you think this side is negative? Why do you think the, the B here is negative? A, because there's a negative relationship between the income and the tax. Please, please talk it. So it's S3. S3, what do you mean? Hey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what? There is a negative relationship between what? In the equilibrium. Between what? Taxes and equilibrium output. Okay. Remember, if government decides to increase, remember this is the equilibrium output. This what remember this B here tells us uh, the percentage impact of T naught on this Y E. Okay, so if this should increase by one one unit, how much this will reduce? Okay, so. We it have negative influence with this. So if this tax increases, this will reduce. Now let's try and put this in um, a simple function. So let's say I have something like, I, it should work for me. All right, so let's say we have Ye equals to, let's say one over, um, one minus zero point six times a is let's say two. Let's say this minus the b here. Okay, it's like zero point seven. That's the weight, and tax is initially one. We shouldn't move further. Okay, or let's say, let's say the i o is two. Please, when you punch this in the calculator, what do you get? Can someone try this for me? It says 6.3. Good. So, Y E now becomes what? 6.3. Let's assume government decides to increase this tax to 3. Okay. So, what do we get? We are going to get Y E equals to one over one minus 0 0.6 times two minus 0 0.7. Now the tax is three plus two. What happens? 4.9. You see? 4.9. 
nine. You see, if you like, put four here. As this increases, the y will be decreasing. That is why we are saying what? It has a negative relationship. So we are expecting that as taxes are increasing, our equilibrium output should decrease. Okay, thank you. All right. So we have something we call balanced budget multiplier. Now, when we say balanced budget multiplier, this basically means when government increases his spending or taxes by the same fraction or amount equilibrium output will also change by the same amount okay so my boss usually like in a layman's or in ordinary language what is budget balance budget multiplier so meaning if he asks in ordinary language and you write this you'll be penalized okay it means you have to say it to someone who is not an economic student to understand Okay, so the, the definition here basically means it shows the effect on income. And this time we are talking about the equilibrium income of an increasing government spending and matched by an equal, which is a bit technical. So the whole idea about balanced budget multiplier is if government decides to increase spending, or taxes by the same fraction or amount, the equilibrium output or equilibrium income will change by the same amount. And we are going to prove this if this is actually true. Okay, so we are going to prove if this is actually true. All right, so let's try this basic mathematics here. Now, we remember we said um, under fiscal policy, the two main items we are dealing with is spending and taxes. Okay, so we are going to use, remember we said autonomous spending as a multiple by which any increase in the components would change the equilibrium output. So we are going to prove this using the multipliers. That's why we did this multiply so changing g which is a all right one over one minus b and we had changing t which is um autonomous tax multiplier was also negative b over B. So a case where we decide to sum these two together, and remember, if we have not that this assumption that changing J is the same as or changing T. Okay, so if we decide to sum these two together, okay, if we decide to sum these two together, we are going to get a very simple equation. Very simple equation which says that changing this one, so we are basing this on this assumption, changing G, okay, which is times one over one minus B. Now, if I should add this, we said changing G is the same as changing T. So I can equally say minus, because this one has the minus, minus changing G times b over one minus b. I don't think anyone is lost here. Uh, please, I'm lost. Oh, so basically the whole idea about this, we, want, we, has, we said that if government increases taxes or spending by the same amount, we are expecting equilibrium output to also increase by the same amount, okay? And I also hint on in macroeconomics fiscal policy, what we are trying to consider here is the 
taxes and the spending. So we said, if we have a multiplier, a multiplier is when if there is a multiple, a change in the multiple by a multiple, we are expecting the same change in what equilibrium output. So we said that we change in G. This is government spending, you know, right? This is government spending, and this is the multiplier. So we are expecting that if we should multiply the multi, um, multiply the multiplier by the government spending, it should amount to the same increase in the equilibrium output. And if we should multiply um, taxes by the tax multiplier, it should also amount to the same change in what equilibrium output. Okay, and with this assumption, we also made it known here that a change in G, because we are making it, we are increasing this by a particular percentage. Let's say here is ten percent, and here is also ten percent. Then we are expecting Y E to also increase by ten percent. That's basically what we are saying here. So if here is ten percent, here is also ten percent. Then we can replace the change in T by change in G. Okay. So if change in G is equals to change in T is the same as what change in T here. Okay, remember here is change in T. We are just summing the two. Okay, so we are just, where we have change in T, we are putting change in G there. Okay, someone could also take it from where we have change in G, the person will put change in T here, change in T here. Because we said change in G is the same as change in T. And that's the assumption we made because we are increasing both taxes and the spending by the same amount. Please do we get it? Yes, please. Are you sure? No, sir. You don't get it, right? I also think because of like the rights, sometimes when it becomes plain, I find it. All right, so let's take it one by one. Okay, so let's take this. All right, so we are just using the multipliers. If note, if note that if G is increased by a change or by a fraction, we are going to see the same change on equilibrium output or equilibrium income. So let's assume here you want to write it as someone said. Times the multiplier, okay? And we also said that if T or T increases by inch, which is that one to is 10%, we are going to get the same effect on equilibrium output. We are going to multiply this one also by the multiplier. Please, sorry, I was logged out. All right, so this is why I was, and I, I got logged out. Okay, so we are seeing that if government change in T, a change in G times its multiplier, and this T also increases by the same change. Okay, we multiply this by eight multiplier. Now, what we are trying to say is, if we should sum these two on this assumption where we said the same change will lead to output, then we can say that where we have change in T is equal to the same as what changes G. 
So we are summing this to change in T, um, change in G times the multiplier, which is one minus B. Because this is negative, we can't say plus. Even I was logged out again. Abaya. All right, so don't worry, this is nothing. It's not difficult. Okay. All that we are saying is change in G times its multiplier, one minus B. We are summing the two, okay? Minus changing, because on, of this assumption, they are both changing by the same percentage. So we can say um, B all over one minus B. So if we sum these two, this is basically what we are saying. If we sum these two, look at what is, what is going to happen. If I sum these two, I'm going to get change in G. Okay. Now, because I'm summing, we'll have one minus B. Okay. One minus B. And because this denominator is the same, we will take one minus B, okay? Now, this is what we are saying. This will cancel this, where we are going to get the same thing as a change in G, okay? So since taxes are increasing by the same amount and um, spending is also increasing the same amount, output, we are assuming to also increase by the same amount. Okay, so you notice that at the end of the day, we had only the change to the output. Okay, and so, please, please ask. You see the the first one when you are multiplying the change in g, g times one over one minus b minus yes. change in g is it times b? Yes, it's times B. So and remember this side was C. It is the yes. tax times H multiplier. Please, can you see this side? Yes, I can. You see, we, we mm. built that cause to change in T. Okay, so it basically, because we said, it's like you saying here, Y is equals to X. Then it means where you see y, you can put x there. Or wherever you see x, you can put y there. And that's basically what we did here. Remember the initial one was changing g times one over one minus b. And the other one was changing t times negative b over one minus b. And if we are saying that y changing g is equals to changing t, meaning wherever we see changing t, Considering what we want to do, we can put change in G. So, sir, so that's that basically what the we did. The change in T is the same as the ACM, like the ACM formula. It's the same the as minus B. Yes, yes, please. Uh -huh. yes, this change in B in T here. Just that on this assumption, we said change in G is the same as change in T. Wherever we see change in T, we just place change in G there. So that we will have like terms in order to divide. Because if I had done this, I have left this change in T and I was adding, you will get confused. You will get something like change in G, right? Minus change in T. Please do you get it. Yeah. So there, I should do what? Yeah, so you see how can you do it the other way around? Where we can see? Yes, yes, someone cannot. That I basically said this, right? Please let me do this. Someone can also take this from the other way around, okay? 
So let's try that one. Okay. At the end of the day, we are just trying to tell you guys that if both of them increase by the same percentage, the change is the same on what the equilibrium output. So let's say someone can change in G. Change. The person is going to represent this change in G1 minus B. Okay, so I'm just trying to take it from the screen. Someone can say, based on this assumption, we will use change in T times one over one minus B, okay? One minus one over B, then minus, remember, we have change in T already times this time B over one minus B. If I, I sum this two, I'm going to get what? Change in T, right? Bracket to pin this minus this, right? One minus B. The numerator, denominator is the same, so one minus B. At the end of the day, we get change in T. This is basically what we are trying to say. Yes. I, I, I don't get it when it comes to the negative as negative after the addition. Oh. It becomes negative because you remember when we did the tax multiplier, yeah. we had negative B over one minus B. Yes. And you know, if I'm adding, this yes. negative will fight this positive. And you know, all the time, negative is stronger than the positive. That's why. Good. One minus B. So what do we? Get? One minus zero point eight. So we get zero point two, right? Yes. You guys are just awesome. I noticed that if I should ask you what is the MPC, quickly, you guys will notice and say it's 0 0.8. Now, you see, this is why I told you that 10 is not really going to be difficult. This is how they will give, they will give to you in exams. Okay? So what they are going to try to tell you is to, one, first, calculate the autonomous spending multiplier. Let Someone said zero point eight. Is this the question is going to be? No. Yes. At the end. All right, so in this example, I remember this is how the question will be. Very soon, I'll open one of the tutorial sets. If you like, just open tutorial set three or four. You will see. how the questions are being asked. Don't really ask you to derive what I was doing. Let you guys appreciate where we are getting these formulas from. That's all. Okay, so if I come here and I ask you, already said this, it's one over one minus B, where we, we had this for. What does this mean? It means the increases by one unit. Equilibrium output would increase by what? Five units. That's what it meant. Okay, so in exams, he would ask you, what is the autonomous spending multiplier? And what is the intuition behind it or explain it? So if you get this five, this means if any of the component, that is what the lady um, tried to explain to us, okay, is a multiple by which increases equilibrium output. Okay, so if this is five, what it means is if any of the components increase by one unit, output is going to increase by four units. Now, who can tell me what will happen if this happens? Uh, 
Um, say, is it if um, the tax increases by 0 0.8, um, output, economic output will decrease by negative 4? Already, you are using decrease and you are using negative again. By 4. Good. But what it's not if it increased by 0 0.8, okay? So all the time, if we want to make any assumption, what this is what we say. If any component, okay, of autonomous tax spending, okay, if any component of autonomous tax spending increase by one unit, output would decrease by what? Four units. Please, do you get it? Yes, sir. All right. So that's basically how we do this. Okay, this is basically how we do this. A. Hey, can someone it see what is happening? It will always be by one unit. Like, like when is yeah, it? Yeah, the time. It be, you see, that was where I wrote the formula on the board and I was increasing the tax by one, one, one. Right? Yeah. So we are not... Yeah. Remember, if we don't give you the value of the tax, we assume by one unit, it can increase by 10. They can give you tax to be four, tax to be five. Okay, so I don't know why. If I move my case, then it will come back here. I don't know if you can also see. Uh, yes, we can see. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, it's doing shaka. So <laughs> this is what I was saying. Increase in autonomous taxes by one unit will decrease equilibrium income by what? Four units. Four. And I was telling you, this is just a multiplier. So you don't worry, we will solve a question. Just calm down. You guys, I think you are on hot seat. All right. <laughs> so, you know, you guys are just awesome. And I'm even planning that if you guys come to school your last week, I would ask a band to organize um, like, I mean, your last day for exams, I would come and do just some revision with you guys, if you are cool. Yeah, we are cool. Yeah. Very, very cool. But the truth is, at that point, everyone becomes very tempted. Let's assume I see the question and I'm trying to solve something with you and you do Shakara. I will leave. I hate Shakara. Uh, nobody you, also, you, you also don't like Shakara. Okay, so remember we said why, remember with the equilibrium um, position, we said y is equal to what? AD, AD, right? Yes. Now, and we said y will be equal to C plus what? I plus what? G. Remember A. these figures have already been given to you up there and we knew our C. So why is this thing doing this? Huh? What kind of chakra is this? It's not moving. Uh -huh. I just want to, I want you guys to see where I'm taking the C from. Okay, so you see, they gave us C to be equal to, C to be equal to what? Y is equals to 100, okay? Plus 0. Plus zero. It's YD. This YD should tell you something. Plus what? I plus J. Already yeah. we know our I. Please put these figures in your um, brain for me. And we have T to be equal to 70. Okay, so I'm going down. Okay. All right. So this is basically what it say. Remember, we know where we had our, our C, so don't get confused. This semi, this colon, you know, it's 0 0.8, it's a typo. Don't, don't so we would have y equals to 100 plus 0 0.8. Remember, when we have y, d, the same as what? y minus what? t. And this time, we know t to be what? 70. 
Okay, so I put 70 here, bracket close, plus we know I to be what? 200. And we know G to be what? 80. This is how the exams would look like. It's so awesome. Is it, not, is it difficult? Is this difficult? No. Okay, so when you come here, you do Y minus 100, hey, sorry, equal to 100, plus because this is in a bracket, let's first take care of this. Someone should multiply 0 0.8 times for me. So we are going to get 0 0.8 Y minus, minus what? Negative what? 50. 56. 56. 56. 56. 56. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Kafra. Kafra, Kafra, Now, this is 56. So we have Y here, we have Y here. So we can do Y minus what? 0 0.8 Y equals to 100 plus, or no, minus 56 plus 200 plus 80. Please let me put all this together, what do you get? 324. Good. Now, okay, I, come again. Don't worry. All right, 324. Remember, I'm just bringing Y out, so I'll have one minus so 0 0.8. So mm -hmm. I'm going to get 0 0.2 y equals to 3, 2, 4. So if what is here is true, then I'm going to get 1, 6, 2, 0. Is that difficult? Yes, it's true. <laughs> All right. Is that difficult? No. 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 So, so they will tell you to calculate for the equilibrium output. Sometimes we won't give you the consumption because we know you know the components of consumption, components of investment, would ask you to do all those stuff before you do this. You get your equilibrium output. Okay, so. So, I have a question. You see, um, the Y minus eight, um, if the, sometimes there is no government when you're expanding the formula. So, is it that if the question doesn't state it, you always add plus G? Okay, so let's say usually we'll give you the function. But if I give you something, and you will notice this from the consumption function. If we give you a consumption function that says that we have 100 plus 0 0.8 Y, this should tell you we don't have government in it. Okay, so one way of looking at this is this, just the consumption function. So without Another way is when, you won't bring the D. So if you see the D, then it means we have government. Another way is when we are giving you these figures, we won't give you J, this one. This one won't be given. Okay, that should also tell you there is no government. So we use this two to check. Is that fine? Yes. All right. So now I can delete. All right. Okay, so let's proceed. The next thing is we are going to try and understand using this fiscal policy as a stabilizing or stabilization tool. Okay. So if I should go down here, how can we use this fiscal policy as a stabilization tool? So we are going to understand some stuff here, something we call actual GDP, potential GDP, and the last one is called GDP key. What we are trying to say is actual GDP is what the economy does produce. Okay, so by the end of the year, what we produce is what we call the actual GDP. 
Now, when we say potential GDP, is what if we had utilized all our resources fully, what we would have produced? Okay, so let's say if the economy was in a full employment state, what they could have produced. That is what we call the potential GDP. And the difference between the actual GDP and the potential GDP is what we know as the output gap. Any question up to this side? Okay. All right, so let's try and understand the gaps. Now, if the output gap, okay, so you remember we said if um, output gap is the potential minus the actual GDP. So let's say YP, if YP is greater than Y, okay, if this is greater than Y, then we have something we call recessionary gap. You would understand all these things very soon. And if YP is less than Y, we call it inflationary gap. It's, they are all here, okay? Then if Y is equal, YP, is equals to Y, we have something called full employment. Okay, so we are going to show this on a graph. Okay, we are going to show all these things on a graph. Now let's see how that also goes. Put these things in mind. If YP is greater than Y, we have recessionary if YP is less than Y, we have inflationary. And if YP is equal to Y, we have full employment. Okay. So let's check. Yes, please. You said if the if YP is greater than Y is Recessional, please. Why is this so? Yes, so I would, I would have explained it when we get to the graph. That's why I didn't mention that. Okay, okay, thank you. All right. Okay, so now using this graph, okay, so the graph is very simple. The graph is very simple. So let's take this graph one by one. I don't know. Let's look at this. So if I should draw this, I'm just trying to let you understand where we had this. Remember this is our 45 degrees, okay? Where we would have um, aggregate demand equals to Y, okay? And this is our actual... Um, Please, can you see? Yes. Yes. All right. So yes, this, this, uh, this is actually our actual. Come again. Never mind. Go on. Okay. So this is our actual aggregate demand for the period. Okay. Now, if I trace this one here. Okay. If you trace this one here, where aggregate demand, okay, or this output, the Y strike with the 45 degrees now, we call this the actual GDP, okay. It's not pure, actual GDP. Now, if we should also strike another line here, you could see that the, the one we were able to produce during the year is low, but are fully produced, okay. You see this 45 degrees is at this point, this is higher than this, okay? So this side is higher than this side, okay? So we call this side the GDP potential. This is what we could have produced up to this side. We could have produced up to this side, okay? But we're able to produce just up to this side. Now, we call it 
Guys, forgive me. I don't know, I've been logged out like three times now. Okay, so I'm not drawing the graph again. Let's look at this, this side. Do you see that this is the 45 degrees line? This um, where we have our IV demand equals to the Y, okay? Then we have this also where in one point you see that at, I think you saw we represent this side by C when we were drawing some of the graphs. But remember these two graphs are not this, okay? So we are assuming that, no, we are like, we are assuming, let's assume this is happening in the economy. This is what we were able to actually produce in that period, okay? So where the, what we were able to actually produce equates the 45 degrees line we call that side aggregate the actual output or actual GDP. Now, if you trace the line here, you will notice that this line, our 45 degrees line is greater than what we actually produce. Okay, so if we trace a line down here, what is up here is what we call the recessionary gap. Now, why do we call this a recessionary gap? It's a recessionary gap because um, aggregate demand is too low, okay? Aggregate demand is too low because if we had utilized all the resources, we should have produced up to here. But because we couldn't produce up to this side, we call it recessionary gap because aggregate demand is too low. Now, we can solve this problem by what? Using expansionary policy. Okay, we can solve this by using ex expansionary. Now, when it is a recessionary, we use expansionary to solve the issue. And remember, we said expansionary is when government tried to increase the spending and reduce taxes. Okay, and if government is increasing, increasing spending, more money will be in the system, more people will be able to produce. And if everyone is trying to convert his or her money to do something, this aggregate demand is going to increase because there will be a lot of money in the system. People will be producing, so this would move up. Now, when we come to this side, the same graph, okay? But this time, the line that indicates the actual output is beneath or be behind the, our actual GDP. Now, where this crosses the 45 degrees, we say this is our actual GDP. Let's assume the issue occurred behind the actual GDP. You will notice that what our actual, the one we were able to produce during the period is higher than the one we produce, like would have produced, okay? This 45 degrees, remember this basically means what is happening here is the same as what is happening here. So this is what we could have produced as an economy, but we were able to produce more than that. What does this mean? It means there is an inflationary gap. This means there is too much spending in the economy, okay? There is too much spending in the economy. And if we want to keep this issue, the only thing we can do to keep this issue is to use um, a contractionary fiscal policy where government would increase taxes to reduce the money in the system, okay? Or to reduce um, output in the system. Because if government is charging more tax, people would have less money to produce more, okay? Hence, it should be reducing, okay? So put this in mind. If it is recessionary, we use contractionary to solve it, the issue. And if it is inflationary, sorry, recessionary, we use expansionary. Inflationary, we use contractionary to solve the issue. Please, 
Is anyone okay here? Um, or the inflationary, they are trying to like, explain the, use the curves to show the actual GDP, like how, like how you explain it using the first one. You know, what I'm trying to say is, look at this 45 degrees line. And this is where we, we actually produce. So uh, where this is crossing, this is the same as this. Then we have our actual GDP. Okay, so we are putting this on a scenario where our potential GDP is behind um, the actual GDP. So let's say we have, first we had the line above it. Now it is, let's say below it. Okay, or be, let's say behind this, and this was after this. So let's assume if it, the line is here, the line is here what does this mean it means that looking at what we could have actually produced which is this line here we could have actually produced up to here but we were able to produce more than that what we actually produce is greater than this. at this side let me annotate this side so at this side at this side, you could see that this red line is higher than this. At this side, you could see that this black line is also higher than this. So a case where the red line is higher than, you see at this side, this is what we actually produce. We are saying that spending is too much in the, uh, in the system, okay? Government is spending too much in the system. So this is what we are actually supposed to produce, but we're able to produce more than that, okay? So output has really increased. So for us to keep that this issue, meaning with inflated output, for us to keep this issue, we have to use something called a contractionary fiscal policy, where government tried to reduce taxes, okay? In order to what? Deter people from producing more than what we can produce. Please do you get it? Yes. Yes, sir. All right. So, please, you can ask the question. Okay. So, if um, there is an inflationary gap, we use a contrastionary uh, uh, method, right? Yes, please. Okay. Sir. Yes, please. And if there is a, a recessionary, we use the Expansionary to solve it. Okay, so a major goal of fiscal policy is to stabilize actual output close to what the potential output. Okay, so if actual output is greater than the potential, then we said we have what uh, inflationary. So at this juncture, we use what contractionary fiscal policy, so we can reduce what output to what the potential GDP. Okay. Now, and if we have, um, I've explained this already, if we have what, um, actual, that is where actual is less than the potential, we have recessionary, we have to use the expansionary to boost the economy, to increase output towards full employment. You know, if you like, if you see this, let's assume we're able to produce up to this side. There would be no, like this line, Let's see, let me try and draw this. Okay, so let's let I'm drawing this side of this graph, the expand the recessionary one. So if I should do something like this, okay, remember this is um that and we said if it is something like this, a e we have y equals to a e here now this side is what our actual output okay so let's assume if the line is here we would have our gdp potential here meaning demand is very low here in this economy so we are using expansionary okay so let's assume if everything is utilized fully okay if we were able to utilize everything fully we would have pushed this graph from this side to this side, 
Okay, so I'm trying to push this graph from this side to this side where we would have gotten something like this. Okay, would have gotten something like this. And when we get something like this, we are saying that the economy is in full employment. Okay, the economy is in full employment. Okay, so that's basically what we are trying to let you understand. Okay, so if, so we've explained this. Now, we are going to understand how, what we meant by if um, the potential is higher than the actual, we have recessionary using figures. Remember, we calculated for this 1620. We calculated this ourselves, okay? We calculated this ourselves. And we have this, we had this component. Now we are going to say that, suppose the potential GDP or the potential output is what? 2000, okay? So if the potential, so this is how the exams would look like. Oh, suppose the potential output is 2000. Now remember this is an output and this is the actual output we had. So if potential is now 2000, what does this mean? What kind of gap would this be? Okay, okay so let's- Recessionary. Good. Recessionary. Recessionary because we said this potential is 2000, which okay, is greater than- Okay, so that's one, two, zero. Okay, 1620. And we said government, if there is a case like this, government should use what? Expansionary, expansionary fiscal policy. policy. And what did we say expansionary fiscal policy? We said government should increase what? Spending. And reduce what? Taxes. Now let's see if that is not true here. So let me clear this. Okay, so we already know we have recessionary gap. So we need expansionary to... Prove this now so that if right, please, if you find this difference, you get three, right? Yeah, Good. yes, sir. So, the reason for which government should what use expansionary is this so, if it is a recessionary, you can't come and use contractionary where you'll be increasing your taxes, you use expansionary so. Remember, what did we say? We said the difference is what? The gap is 380. And if government wants to keep this, the autonomous spending multiplier was what? Five. Five. Right? And yeah. we said it's a multiple by which a change in a component of the autonomous would increase our what? Equilibrium output. Okay. So this is what basically we are saying. The multiplier is five. So government does not have to what? Increase spending by what? This 380. Okay, this 380. But how many times is this by? So you see, come again. Remember, we said the gap is what? Um, the gap is 380. It's here. 380, right? 380. And we are saying that government doesn't need to what? Increase this up to 380 to fill this gap. But because we said, if a change in the multiple or that the autonomous multiplier is a multiple by which a change in any of the components, okay, increases equilibrium outputs by that change. We can say that government should just increase this by what? 76. So we are just dividing the gap by the multiplier. So if you do that, you are going to get 76. So we are saying that if government increases its spending by 76, we are going to close this gap. Please do we get it? Uh, okay, yeah. so. so I the, the 380 by five. by five, and I had this 76, which is the same so, as what it is. So, so you always have to um, 
divide the gap by the autonomous yes, spending yes. Order. good so if you want to know how much the government is supposed to either increase or decrease just divide it by the gap it will tell you how much government is supposed to we are saying it should increase because we are in which for a uh, era we are in the expansionary hot era so we are saying it should rather increase spending and reduce taxes. Let's assume it was an inflationary. Would I have said government should what? Decrease, decrease. spending. And right. what? Increase, increase taxes. Tax. Increase tax. So mm -hmm. your tutorial said, okay, we are going to solve questions that would help you guys appreciate it very well. Okay, so that is the whole idea about using fiscal policy as what a stabilization to, to stabilize the economy. Okay, so we had the gap to be what? All these things are in your notes and they, we've carefully what? So say, that's not them. mean that if it was, um, if you were decreasing, it would still be government must decrease it by 76. Man. Yes, if, if uh -huh. we're decreasing, we would have said government should have decreased this by what? 76, so this is basically what we are saying, okay? You know, so this is the change. You remember we were dealing with some change in why, change in why. So we are saying government is going to increase this spending. It's spending by what? 76. Okay. And already government was, government spending was what? 80. Um, 80. Okay. 80. If you want to really, really understand if this is true, just add the 76 to this, you will notice that whatever we will get to be equal to the 2000 we had here. So we'll be in yes. full employment, if you like, try it. Full okay, so that is the whole idea about government doing that, doing that, doing that. Okay, it's not really difficult. So left with just, okay, two slides. Yes, please. Please I wanted to ask if there can be a situation where change in G is not equal to change in T. So you, you are talking about the balanced budget multiplier. Yes, please. So if you are using that, how would you solve for? Oh, me what? By yourself, it's not, it's not even possible. Okay. Oh, okay. Yes, it's not really, really, really possible. And say when you get the same two thousand. Did you have two thousand? Yes. So, but that's basically what we are trying to say. We are trying to say that if government increases its spending by seven to six, it should put us in what full employment, where we would have two thousand, two thousand for the actual. Do you get it? Please, do you get it? Yes, sir. Yes, because we said government would want to solve that issue. So um, in your tutorial set, we are going to work on this, where we have an inflationary situation. What should government do so that we would reduce this output to the potential output? So that one to learn from there. It's not difficult. Okay, guys, it's not difficult. Now, in exams, usually my boss will, this doesn't call for calculation. So he would ask you to define um, things like automatic stabilizer, okay? And another thing is also called carrying out effect. So these are just definition he would ask you to do. So when we say automatic stabilizer, it refers to the inbuilt fiscal mechanisms within an economy that dampens effects of fluctuations in what? aggregate demand on actual output. So the word automatic should even tell you the moment there is a gap, automatically, the system itself reorganizes itself to keep that issue. That is why we call it automatic stabilizer. Okay, so this one, we don't have to manually sit down and think about anything. Automatically, it deals with it itself. Please, do you get it? Yes, sir. All right, so they ensure that during recession, while loss of job leads to loss of income, consumption expenditure do not fall so much to deepen the recession. Okay, so when we say recession, like when COVID came, US country was declared to be in recession. 
recession is basically where production is not booming. Okay, things are basically on the ground. The economy is on the ground. Okay, and you know, we said that even if you are not getting money, you will still consume. So the system will find its way in order to not allow consumption to fall so much so that it will deepen the recession. Okay, so that's basically what we are trying to say. And it's happened in Ghana. Okay, there was a case where the government is feeding basically all the school children. There was a case where they bought rice. Some countries bought rice, like Nigeria. They went to share it to its citizens. Okay, so that we would keep the issue. That's the whole idea. Okay, now automatic stabilizers are more prominent in developed countries than in the developing countries. You know, those who have traveled abroad will testify that some countries like America, there are some stores where you can just go and eat for free, okay, without paying anything. And it's not like in Ghana where Obeka say, oh, I can and draw by and then swaba, I can go and pepe, we will just see so many stuff so that we would demoralize the person from coming. Okay, there are some joints in America where you can go at any time and eat for free. Okay, and this is where Chinese will come in to just educate us more on that. Okay. So they are doing all those things so that the economy won't fall. Okay, so they are just social vices. Okay, so that people would have something to eat, where to, some somewhere to sleep. Okay. Now, crowding out effect. What is crowding out effect? I know you guys have seen this. I think business management. You guys did. I've gotten the course in the university, but you've seen this thousand and one time. Okay, so basically it would ask you to define this crowding artifact, and this is the definition. So it refers to, uh, it refers offset in aggregate demand that results when expansionary policy raises the interest rate and thereby reduces investment spending and consumption expenditure. Now, remember, he said that when there is an expansionary, more money will be in the system. Okay. When we have more money in the system, we like to want to buy, some would want to, um, I don't know. So let's, let's take to this case, a case where there is so much money in the system, you go to the bank, you get money to borrow from. And as more people are demanding for borrowings, we should know that eventually going to increase our interest rates. Okay, so if there is so much money and people borrow a lot, people borrow a lot in the case where um, it is going to increase the interest rate in the market. And anytime interest rates increases, people would be deterred, okay? from investing because if I'm going to go and the interest rate is so high, I'll it will deter me from growing. Hence F I can't mute read. your microphone. Okay, so it will deter me from growing. Hence it is going to reduce the amount I could have invested. Okay, and when we talk about investment, you guys know this investment already. Is it a business fixed investment, residential or what? Inventory. So we are not looking at investments where you are going to put your money in the bank. So you go and borrow from the bank, then you come and build an office factory or a factory for your business. Now, if you go to the market and the interest rate is so high, it will deter you from what? Borrowing. Hence, your, your investment will decrease. Putting that aside, if interest rate is so high in the market, your consumption will decrease because you wouldn't want to consume your money or the amount of money that is on you. Then you go and borrow later at a higher rate. Okay, so your consumption, you would want to hold on your consumption 
So that is the whole idea of what Cardin artifact. Okay, so when expansionary fiscal policy raises interest rates, thereby reducing what investment spending and consumption. That is the whole idea of our Cardin artifact. Okay, so at this juncture, we are done with fiscal policy in the simple cation system. Maybe I, I was thinking we could finish very early and saw our last year set in, in set one. Then we'll move to set two. Then you would appreciate this aggregate demand in cation and the fiscal policy in cation. But let's see what happens this Thursday. Okay. Yes, sir. But yes. I, I would be glad. I would be glad if you guys read ahead because now you have the slice you can read ahead so when i come it will be like i'm not going to spend much time because most of the stuff you guys were asking they were just in the slice okay just that because you didn't go through it but i'll be glad if you guys go through it before we meet next thursday thank this you thursday. yes please this thursday sorry okay. thank you for coming i, I really appreciate your thank you thank you sir. Say so God bless you. God bless, God bless you too. Thank so you. We like you. Thank 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 you. Okay, so I'll send that to you, okay? All right. Oh, someone is saying it's difficult. Oh, Elliot, it's very simple. It's not difficult. Okay, calm down. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Right. 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 What the previous video? <laughs> it's not difficult. It may be you just joined. It's not difficult. And trust me, I'm that free, okay? You can just contact me if you need any help. I'm fine. I'm, I'm cool. Today. Okay, I'm very cool. Yes, yes all right. Yes. So, someone said, oh, I said thank you guys you. like me. I think I like you guys too. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.